patients treated with epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitors, up to 100% of patients will develop some type of dermatologic adverse event during their course of therapy. The epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitors that have been approved and that result in these conditions include erlotinib, cetuximab, panitumumab, lapatinib, afatinib, as well as pertuzumab. The majority of these uh, patients treated with these agents will develop an acneiform or papulopustular rash that affects the face and upper body, especially within the first two to four weeks of therapy. This rash has been associated with a decreased quality of life in patients, and in two-thirds of patients there will be associated symptoms of pruritus and tenderness of these lesions. It is important to note that in addition to this acneiform or papulopustular rash, patients will also develop other dermatologic conditions, including dry skin or cirrhosis, pruritus or itchy skin, nail changes, including paronychias and brittle nails, and also hair alterations, including curling of the hair, increased hair loss on the scalp, but increased hair growth on the face and eyelashes in a, about a third of patients. Since we know that so many of these patients develop the acneiform or papulopustular rash, we try to treat patients prophylactically, in other words, before the rash even appears. The way we do this is by evaluating patients before they start therapy with an EGFR inhibitor and initiating them on a regimen based on two randomized controlled trials with the use of an oral antibiotic of the tetracycline family, either doxycycline 100 milligrams twice daily for the first six weeks or minocycline 100 milligrams a day for the first eight weeks of therapy. In addition to this, we also recommend the use of a topical antibiotic of low potency such as hydrocortisone on the face and chest twice daily during the first six to eight weeks. By doing so, data has shown that we are able to reduce the incidence of dermatologic toxicities of grade two or worse in severity by more than 50 percent, reducing them in patients that are treated with uh, placebo or best supportive care 60 percent to about 30 percent in terms of grade two or worse uh, skin toxicities. Regarding clinical trials in the management of acneiform rash to EGFR inhibitors, there are many current strategies that are being developed. Uh, we are currently initiating a trial using topical dapsone for the prevention of rash to EGFR inhibitors. There are other trials using vitamin K in the prevention of uh, EGFR inhibitor induced acneiform rash. Other studies conducted in Europe are testing other types of oral antibiotics because patients may sometimes be intolerant to tetracycline antibiotics. And also, uh, there are other trials which are investigating retinoids, such as isotretinoin, in the prevention of acneiform rash to EGFR inhibitors. So it is still very early to say, but I am confident that in many of these instances, these interventions will be effective in mitigating this rash to a significant point, although we do know now that treating rash uh, prophylactically is the key factor that one must take into consideration. So treating the rash even before it appears, since we know that over 80 to 90 percent of patients develop rash, especially with erlotinib, afatinib, and the monoclonal antibodies cetuximab and panitumumab. It is important to keep in mind that only about 8 percent of patients that develop dermatologic adverse events are referred to a dermatologist. And also survey data has shown that about two-thirds of oncologists will dose modify EGFR inhibitors because of rash alone, and up to a third of oncologists have to stop EGFR inhibitors because of the rash alone. So there is still a lot of room for improvement in oncologist practices to better mitigate the acneiform rash to EGFR inhibitors. So how to do so? It is important to keep in mind, again, that prophylactic treatment with oral antibiotics and topical steroids during the first six to eight, eight weeks of EGFR inhibitor therapy is the best way to mitigate the rash and to maintain patients on therapy. Here at Memorial Sloan Kettering, we see patients frequently every two weeks when they develop the acneiform rash. We are also uh, experienced in topical corticosteroids that need to be utilized for these patients.
For example, we do know that low to medium potency topical corticosteroids are the ones that should be used on the face for uh, weeks at a time. For example, hydrocortisone 2.5% or triamcinolone 0.1%. In addition to this, not only tetracycline antibiotics are effective in mitigating the rash, as we have found anecdotally. For example, other antibiotics in those patients that are intolerant to doxycycline or minocycline, such as cefadroxyl or augmentin, can be effective in mitigating this rash. So it is important for people to become familiar with the antibiotics that are active against the rash, as well as topical corticosteroids and the way to prescribe these medications so that patients can obtain these uh, prescriptions at the beginning of their therapy and start to use them consistently within the first two months. Also, it is very important that during the first month of therapy with EGFR inhibitors, patients are followed either by a clinic visit at about two weeks or with a phone call because this is a time when most of the patients will develop dermatologic uh, toxicities, especially the acneiform rash, which is the most important toxicity during the first month of therapy with these agents.